Good morning. Today is Friday, July 2nd, 2021. I have a fantastic story to share with you that I heard from Rabbi Melech Biederman. He tells the story of a man named Rabzelig Braverman, who was one of the respected Jews of old Jerusalem. And every Friday, Rabzelig and his family would bake many, many, many chalas. And he would distribute them to the poor. There were many poor people in his area. And he had his regulars who he would distribute to every Friday. And this way, he would be able to help these poor people to be able to honor Shabbos. And it's the way that he himself would honor Shabbos by helping others to be able to enjoy Shabbos. There was one man who was very poor. He was a man who was broken in body and in spirit. He worked as a manual labor. And he worked so hard all week for very little pay for pennies. And one week late on Friday afternoon, this poor man knocked on Rebzelik's door and he requested his two chalas. Rebzelik said, there are no chalas left today. They're all distributed. I don't have any more chalas to give you. So this man said, Reb Zelig, I need two chalas. And Zelig said to him, my friend, listen, my brother, they're all gone. I don't have. This man lost his temper because he expected to get the chalas. He lost his temper and he said, Zelig, I need those two chalas. And he slapped Zelig across the face two times. Right away, Reb Zelig went to his own Shabbos table, which was already set for Shabbos. He took his own two chalas that he was planning to eat for Shabbos. And he gave his chalas to this man, to this poor man. The man left. Zalik's children who were watching this, they asked their father, should you really have rewarded such behavior? He hit you and you responded with giving away your own chalas? Is that the right way to do it? So Zalik said to his children, you need to understand what's going on with him. You need to understand why he slapped me. This man is very bitter. He works so hard. He only earns pennies. And each week he comes home with two delicious chalas that I give him. It is his only Oneg Shabbos. It's the only thing he has with which to enjoy Shabbos. It is the only thing that he can put on his Shabbos table that gives a bit of joy, a bit of relaxation, and a bit of pleasure. And without those chalas, his Shabbos is almost like Tisha B'Av. God forbid. So you have to understand the bitterness that was behind the slapping. And because of the bitterness, and because of the, slap, the disappointment, he slapped me. And he said to his children, the truth is, I don't need these two chalas. I have a box of old matzah left over from Pesach. I can make a mozi on the matzah and let him have the two chalas because he really needs it. I don't need it as much. Later, Reb Zelig went into his room and his children could hear him speaking to himself and crying to himself. And he was saying to himself, Zelig, Zelig, 
Why do you need to get two slaps in the face to understand that you should give away even your own chalas to someone else who is in greater need? Why couldn't you have done that without the two slaps? As we approach Tisha B'Av, we remember that we suffer the destruction of Tisha B'Av and other destructions our rabbis tell us because of sinaskinam, needless hatred among Jews. And the tikkun for that, the fixing of that, the resolution for that has got to be ahavaskinam, needless love, unconditional love a willingness to give and to care for others beyond the way that we give and care for ourselves. Why do we need to get so many slaps from heaven to understand that we need to love each other and to help each other and to give away what is ours to others, to give ourselves to others as an expression of ahavaschinam, of this beyond the absolute need for love, needless love. Because that is what will transform these weeks of mourning into three weeks of joy and celebration. Let's try not to wait for the slap. Let's act this way towards each other on our own initiative. My friends, I want to wish you a great Shabbos. I hope that all of us are able to incorporate the messages and the lessons of this three-week period so that it becomes for us not just a series of formal observances of what we do and do not do, but that those observances express the inner feeling of what these days are supposed to mean for us. My friends, I want to wish you a great Shabbos, a Shabbos filled with ahavas chinam, abundant love and giving of ourselves to others. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.